Today I want to have a look at this 486. Well, technically it's a 386 with a 486 instruction set. I have not much information about the CPU apart from it has one kilobyte of level one cache and it's supposed to be faster than a regular 386. It is rated for a clock speed of 40 megahertz and I found the CPU in a motherboard that I found at the scrapyard. We will look at the motherboard in a moment but when I went through my CPU collection, I found a second one. That was a bit unexpected and I don't remember from where I got the CPU. It is almost the same model number, it just has an appendix slash E and it says 40GA instead of 40BGA. So I don't know exactly what's the difference, I tried to find some information online but these two CPUs seem to be absolutely identical. If we turn them around, we see two different imprints. One is QED and the other one says AAV and it's apparently made in Taiwan. But I think I will try the original CPU that came in the motherboard and well maybe I can just see if this CPU works later on. It also has a little chip here on one corner. This one looks fine. Also the corner here is a golden triangle. This one here is just a tiny blue dot. Okay, so then let's put these two CPUs aside and have a look at the motherboard. And this is the motherboard we're looking at today. This is a regular 386 motherboard. It has only ISA slots, obviously. It has a socket for the CPU and one for the FPU. So in here we can put a floating point unit. It has an unidentified ALI chipset, what I understood. We will look at the RetroWeb in a moment. And this board came with this CPU. So what I want to do is see if this combination still works. This board also had a battery here, which we removed. I will look at this area under the microscope in a moment because there is still some corrosion going on around the external battery connector. But I think everything else looks decent. I don't even think we need to fix anything for today's test. Unfortunately, there is one trace that is cut here. We will see this under the microscope as well. I'm not planning on fixing the battery circuit today, uh, disabling the charging circuit and so on. I just want to see if this board works and then we will run a few benchmarks comparing it to my real 386 from AMD, which is also clocked at 40 megahertz. And we will see if this CPU really is such a big upgrade. Of course, we'll also run some benchmarks. We'll run Doom. We'll see what the frame rate is and so on. But for now, I just want to jump quickly under the microscope and look at this area here. If everything looks fine, I will reassemble the system and then we can see if it works. So let's quickly jump under the microscope and see what's going on. Okay, and here we are under the microscope. This is the area where the battery was connected. And there are just a few traces. And here we can see how the battery liquid damaged this trace here. I think there is absolutely nothing left. The battery also damaged the spots where the battery was soldered, so I'm pretty sure this solder will not easily go. I will not spend time on this one right now. And I think here's the external battery connector. I see some corrosion here as well, so we would have to remove the battery connector here, these pin headers, to make sure to get all of this corrosion out there. I will not do this today. I think you have seen plenty of videos where I'm trying to fix damage traces. What I always check on those boards are the ISA slots. Sometimes you have opposite pins that are touching and this is because, I don't know, somebody was maybe not careful removing a card or inserting a card and maybe one of these contacts moved out of the rail here and they are touching each other and that's not good. So. Very briefly, I'll go through all the slots. At the same time, obviously, I can look for corrosion, but this board looks pretty good. There is no problem with the ISA slots. What else do we have? We have cache memory. So I have a feeling this are in total 128 kilobytes. There are four chips. 
there is space for another four chips. And I think this is the tag RAM here. So I have to check. I don't want to Google all the part numbers now and calculate how many kilobytes of level one cache we have. Well, technically it's level two cache because our CPU has one kilobyte level one cache. I don't even know if this will be activated by default or I have to run some software to activate it. We will see. Oh, one more thing I want to do before we power on the board is to see if we have any shorts. So here's the power connector. We start here from the left. This is five volt, five volt, five volt. Then we have, I have to look at the pin out what this is. We have something else is uh, white. And then these ones here are all ground. So we have four pins that are ground. Yes, they all beep, that's okay. So let's see if our five volt rail is shorted. No, this was just capacitors charging and then it stopped. So these ones are not shorted. All these three should be the same. Five volt rail. Yes, not shorted to ground. And the second last is also five volt. So this one should beep now because I still have my other uh, probe to the five volt rail on the other side. Yes, okay, so this is good. I think we can power on this board. But first, let's have a look at the retro web and see if I can find some additional information about this board. So let's see if we can find our board on the retro web. 386. I guess DX expansion slots. We have seven expansion slots, six of which are ISA 16 bit and one is an 8-bit ISA slot. So let's just see if we find something. Okay, we have two pages, that's not too bad. If you look at the previous section, the cache is on the bottom right, like this one here. This looks actually similar already, the A-bit ABFA3, and it also has this section here. Okay, let's see what this board looks like. Yes, this almost looks identical. I just, my board is green. And this one here has a soldered 386. Okay, it could be this board. Let's see what else do we have. This one looks like our board again. Yes, this looks the same. And we again have the section here where some manufacturers put their logo and brand name there. Oh, this also has an ALI branded chipset. And I think this is exactly the same model number that I have on my board. So this could be another option. Do we have one more that looks similar? It looks like that design was maybe used as a base for so many other manufacturers. I'm looking for cash chips on the bottom right corner, like here and here. So they all seem to be similar. It has jumper manuals. That would be interesting later on. Okay, there is not much. Oh, it has a CX486 DLC configuration as well. That's interesting. So maybe we will go with this one because if I'm not mistaken, these jumpers, I saw JP 9, 10, and 11. 9, 10, and 11, they are right under the floating point unit. Let me double check if we have jumpers on my board. And yes, I can see the jumpers. I'll point this out in the video. But yes, we have these jumpers. So this documentation may be quite helpful. What's on the second page? No pictures. I, without pictures, I can't say anything. This one maybe, unknown AL386-3340-CALI. This could be some board. Maybe this is the one that I have here. Let's see what documentation we get. So here we have the chompers again, JP9, 10, and 11. These are for the 486. And it's here. So it says Cyrix and Intel, okay. I guess this is the 486 configuration. Let's compare this to this one, close, close, closed, yes. Okay. 
and I see on my board they're all open, open, open. But it had the Cyrix or the Texas Instruments 486 CPU in it. Hmm. Okay, so we can maybe assume that one of these documentations will help us further. But I guess now it's time to power on the board and see if it works. First, I will just plug it in with the power supply, but no CPU, no memory, no graphics card. I just want to see if one of these uh, tantalum capacitors are exploding. I do not want to have that, obviously, but I need to be careful. Okay, so let me plug in the power on the system and then we'll have a look. Okay, the board is connected. Let's see what happens when we power it on. Okay, nothing, that's good. Okay. Next step is to use a post analyzer card just to see if we have all the voltages available and yeah, then we can install the CPU and some memory and see if we get something. Okay, let's try again. Okay, it looks good. I think all the voltages are there. Okay, let's see if we get some postcodes when we power on the system. Without a graphics card, it should still boot, but it may give us a beep code that says, hey, there is no VGA card installed. Yes, we get postcodes. And this is the signal that, hey, I don't have a VGA output card. So this board seems to be working. As video card, I will use a Zeng ET4000 with ISA connector. Okay, everything is connected. I added an I.O. controller. We have a 32 megabyte compact flash drive. It just has a basic DOS and some benchmark programs on it. It has a floppy drive. It has the Zeng ET4000. And I think it's time to see if this system boots. Yes, it shows only 7,808 kilobytes. That's interesting. Okay, so the memory doesn't look right. We have 640 plus 7,168. That is not enough memory. We are missing something. Ah, okay, it's 384. This is, I think, the upper memory. This is uh, not accessible anyway. This is something that is reserved. So I think we are fine. Today is September 2nd, and we have definitely a floppy drive. We have... Oh, this one doesn't support the 2.88 megabyte drives. It's not in the BIOS. Okay. My other board from Soyo does have that option. Just something that I noticed right now. We have VGA, that's fine. Let's go to advanced. So, ta mouse support option. I don't know if this option was available on the Soyo board. Tick count, memory parity check error, that's fine. I do not have a numeric coprocessor. Uh, I think my other board had here the turbo feature which I could enable and disable, so... Oh, system boot up CPU speed is just called differently. That makes way more sense. Enable external cache. Internal cache memory, oh wow, it has an option in the BIOS. Wow, that's cool. Do you think we have the one kilobyte accessible right out of the box? So, autoconfig, 16-bit ISA, command weight, uh, well, we'll see later on if we can do something. What do we have here? Okay, so one is the lowest anyway. Write buffer, back cache, buffer, back, 
buffer. I would have to read on that one. Wait a second, do they have, oh, they have a help here. Okay, that's very useful. Oh, that's interesting. So here you can set the ISA clock. So here is a fixed clock of 7.15 megahertz. This is not what we want. What other options do we have? Two. Clock two, is that two third or the second clock signal divided by three, four, five? I think I have to measure this with an oscilloscope, but that's a bit odd. Ah, maybe this is clock times two over three, four. This maybe is the speed of the crystal. So if I have 80 megahertz, then I get 8 megahertz. That would be acceptable. So I'll try to go with this option right now. Clock times 2 over 10, which should give me 8 megahertz. This is what I think it is. I'm not sure. System cacheable, video cacheable. Yes, enable. Cast delay. What do we have here? Okay, enabled or normal. We'll leave normal. And uh, let's see if we can find our hard drive. Uh, where is our hard drive? No hard disk installed. Okay, that's bad. Uh, it doesn't have an IDE auto detection feature. That is not good. Okay, I quickly have to check how this compact flash card was configured in my other board because this has an auto detect feature and this board doesn't. That is a little bit unfortunate. 32. And here we go. This is the correct configuration, hopefully. I think we're already booting from drive C. Yes, boot up sequence is drive C. Okay, so right to CMOS and exit. Let's see if we can boot to DOS. Okay, so it did take a little bit long for Hymem to test the extended memory. That was a little bit odd. But the first thing I want to see is the cache check. I also saw 486SX. That was a little bit odd as well. So we have a Cyrix TI, Texas Instruments, 486 DLC, 40 megahertz. And that CPU is hot. Very hot. And it says here, size of level 1 cache is 32 kilobytes. That doesn't make any sense. But it says internal level 1 cache enabled in write-through mode. Okay, let's quickly check cache check. No. No, 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 no. Something is not right. So first of all, I want to do something for the CPU because I'm burning literally my fingers. It is super hot. It detected the 128 kilobytes of cache and we see here also a little bit of a difference from 128 to 256 kilobytes. And you see the machine does not seem to have any cache. So it's just too slow. And you see the memory access speed is 4.4 megabytes. Something is not right. Maybe my clock speed what i said in the bios is not correct we have to figure that out unfortunately the oscilloscope confirmed that this setting is correct so there is no problem with the bus speed now i'm not sure if we are running in turbo mode i think this is the next thing i will try so I want to boot now the system and then we'll open a benchmark like system information and then I will try to trigger the turbo feature. I'll leave this on high and let's see what happens. Yeah, it, it, this is way too slow. Yeah, we still get 11.8. So even though I specify in the BIOS that we should have the high performance, it doesn't seem like it's doing it. 
So what I will do now is I will have a jumper here and there are two pin headers, which I need to short. I will do this right now. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Okay, so we almost have twice the speed of an Intel 386DX33. Wow, this is amazing. I have to check quickly what the speed of the other 386 is, the AMD 386DX40, the pure 386. And here I can see in system information, 43.2. Wow, this CPU is 30% faster. Let's run a few other benchmarks. Uh, let's start with 3D Bench. For comparison, the 386 got in 3D Bench 15.1. So we need to beat 15.1. And how many frames do we get here? 20! That's about 30 or 33 percent faster. Wow, okay. Let's try another benchmark, PC player. So I'm running only the low resolutions because there is really no need to have a system with a 386 or 486 to run high resolution benchmarks. They are struggling already with lower resolutions. Here we have PC player and 320 by 200. And the 386 from AMD scored 3.7 frames per second. And the Texas Instruments scores 5.4. That's a lot faster. Okay, what else? Let's do Top Bench. Top Bench scored 85. Almost 100. Okay, there is not much difference here, but still it's faster. Let's see, what else do we have? Let's try cache check now. So let's see if we see a diff. Wow. Oh, I think it disabled the entire cache when the turbo mode was not enabled. These are really good numbers. I have to put for comparison, I have to put the result of the other CPU on the screen. The other 386 was a lot slower, I think. We will see that later on. So what do we have? Now this machine seems to have one cache, 128 kilobytes. That's good. Main memory speed is 18.2. I think before we had 4.4. Uh, this is a huge difference now. So this is good. This will outperform any 386 clocked, even overclocked probably. This is amazing. What other benchmark do we have here? Let's run Doom. Doom is something that scored very poorly on the 386. It is only the small resolution, so we will see the small window. But even this one looks good. Uh, the 386 had sometimes stutters. This one is very smooth, and I don't think we will have any issue to reach maybe around 30 frames per second. The AMD 386DX40 reached 21 frames per second. Let's see how many frames we get from our Texas Instruments, the 486 DLC. And... Ha! 36.24! That definitely is a much better result. Now the last thing I want to test is pizzas. And why I want to test this is because I want to see if we see a dip from our one kilobyte level one cache. And if we don't see the drop in, okay, I guess it stopped. That's not good. It detected the processor as Cyrix, but then it stopped. And my numpad is frozen. So yeah, this is a little bit unfortunate that we do not have a speedsys report because that could tell us a little bit more about the cache. And here I am while editing the video. It turns out that I am not the only person who has issues with a 486DLC CPU and speedsys. And this is probably due to the Cyrex CPU and the certain features it brings to the table.
When I started shooting the footage for this project, I didn't anticipate that there may be a rabbit hole like this one that I need to follow. And I only noticed this now after I started editing the video. So instead of going into the details or what I've recorded so far, because most of the things will not be accurate, I will cut it out of the video. However, I can tell you that my motherboard is Cyrex aware. It will enable the cache by default from the BIOS, but it seems like it doesn't do that correctly. Remember the setting in the BIOS to enable the internal CPU cache? This might be the issue why Speedsus is crashing, but I'm not sure about this and I don't want to speculate right now. So this will all come in a separate video. Just be aware that all benchmark results we have seen by the 486 DLC today are so good because most likely the level 1 cache is enabled. And here you see a summary of all the data I've gathered so far. The 486 DLC is a massive improvement over a regular 386 CPU. And I want to show you this in a real game now that is playable on this system. We will look at X-Wing from 1993, it's the floppy disk edition. And first I will try it on the 486 DLC and then we will have comparable footage on a 386DX40. Sir, our Thai interceptors have located a rebel fleet orbiting the planet for Kana. Excellent. Prepare the attack. Move our Star Destroyers within range and launch all TIE Fighter Squadrons. At once, sir. Okay, joystick detected. Ah, perfect. So this is the TX486 DLC. And in the floppy disk edition we have a copy protection. Welcome to there we go. I will go for historical combat. Let's just find a mission that makes sense to test the capabilities of this CPU and this system. Uh, let me find a nice mission. Okay, this one looks okay maybe. Let's see. Okay, here we don't have mission briefings with voiceovers. It's just the text, but that's okay. So let's fly our first mission. And let's go into hyperspace. Okay. Nice, okay. This one looks pretty fluid. Oh. Yeah, this is very playable on this CPU. Nice shot. And the mission is complete. So you have seen now what the CPU can do. I think it was very fluid throughout the entire gameplay. You could see that there was no stuttering and the system didn't slow down. Question is, how is the other system performing? I do have the FPU installed, so this is definitely something to consider. I don't know if it actually is being used by this game, but it was very playable. This is what I remember playing this game on my 486 back then and this was a 486 DX4100. So this 386 with 40 megahertz is holding up pretty well.
Okay, and here we are with our other system. Let's see if it boots. I just set it up. Yes. The nice thing about this BIOS is that it has auto detect for hard drives. The other BIOS didn't have that. And that's not really nice, but what to do? Ah, perfect. You just port the entire hard drive. Welcome to the flagship independence. And now we fly the same mission again. Oh yeah, hyperspace you already see maybe a little bit. There is a delay. Okay, so far looks good. No, no. So what do you think? Do you see a difference here? Let's see, next one. Okay. knew he was shooting at me. Uh. Got you. And that's it. So what do you think about this system? This is an AMD 386DX40 versus the TX486DLC from Cyrix or Texas Instruments. So, and this is all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you want me to test something else with this CPU, the 486 DLC from Texas Instruments. I have two of those. I haven't tested the other CPU yet, but I think they should both be working. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. A big shout out also to my Patreons for their invaluable support. And we are going home now, and I will log off. Thank you so much again, and see you in the next one.